I want to blow minds. I want to try to like find ways, like the, the, the things that I work on in my, my uh, uh, science experiments and stuff. You go like, oh, music works so interesting when you take this melody and take this idea from the audience, which means this, but then the visual of this. And then you, and when you throw these things out to people, you're like, get it, get it. And when they, kinda, when they come along for the ride and they, they uh, get it, that's what creates a demand. People come, so the thing that I, enjoy doing the most is what makes people go, I want to go see that guy. And then, and then you build your following, but I'm grateful that I, that you're building a following on what you love, like that saying, do what you love and the, and the money will follow. And it kind of feels like that where, where you're just, you're finding ways to express and then you're trying to find your people that get it. You know, and there's, and I got okay with that a long time ago. There's people that they go like, that's not my thing. That's cool. I'm not going to transform you over. It's almost like I'm over here doing my thing and I make sure I yell it, make sure people know I'm over here doing it. Now you want to come over here? Love to have you. If you don't, I'm not trying to trick anybody into being my follower. By all means, I've always wanted to be able to make a living playing music so that I can be doing what I love all the time. I don't have the, I wouldn't have the discipline to do something and then switch over to something. And um, so I'm grateful that it, that it, it works that way. But to me, it's like a, 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 it's therapy. It's like a process all the time of this, this learning and growing. And then, and you would think it'd be like, oh, you mean for the sake of your career? Not really, <laughs> for the sake of me as a human being, you know. And then, and then luckily, all these little things that you bring and you throw around, other people dig them too and they'll come out to the shows and support it and it all works. That was off of a, a record called Submerged. It was called Lost on Purpose. I like that, that a title for one thing. It's almost like a, a uh, probably a motto that I would use. It's like I always find that when I'm playing music that uh, things that are most exciting are the things that I did not expect that, that, that I might open my mind towards, whether it's live or recording. It's, it's, uh, um, those are the little gifts that you get in music. And, uh, but that little uh, that, uh, piece to just uh, um, uh, as it came out of the recording, it was just airy spatial thing, and it just uh, lost on purpose was a, a um, perfect uh, title for the feel of that. 
If I feel good and the people that I surround myself with and the, and the, the music and the way of making a living and the connections, if I feel incredibly uh, nurtured by that, I, I just want more of it. And, it. and now, by all means, if you told me, you know, Sony Records was going to do this, la 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 la, it's like, by all means, yes, any of your artists would say, you know, of course it would be nice to have greater exposure, but it's not something I long for, it's just if, if that happens, that's good, but what I want is what I see right now, and I need this to feel good and real. I don't know, the same way as like if somebody could read a book, and they nurture themselves, and they feel uh, a better person because of it, it's just like, music is, just does it for me, the experience of, not so much about just me playing music at you, me bouncing ideas off of you, and then I learn something about myself, so whatever that's called, but I get a rush from it, and I like it, and I like doing more of it. Oh, bus driver, bus driver, carry me home. Bus driver, bus driver, carry me home Bus driver, bus driver, won't you carry me, carry me home I was out for a drive the other day, I passed by my old junior high school I could have swore I heard that old class bell ringing Although I couldn't tell which one, see I just think remember two sounds of the old class bell The first was that ordinary everyday functional ring that you expected, I mean it separated the cars as it moved us through the day, but oh, then there was that last ring. That last ring, so beautiful and vibrant. Mm, that was freedom. Going ring a ling a ling out the door into the sunshine. Where the buses are waiting in a big yellow line. Step on up, one, two, three. Oh, maybe a uh, quick hello to the bus driver later, then on to the back. All oh, the unappreciated bus driver lady. I realize now that I took it for granted then. I mean, I was the one watching the road, the speed, the railroad crossing. She was. I got to look around, and then I did. I surely did. First stop, I remember a cornfield. That's where the quiet girl stepped off and began walking down a long dirt driveway that just seemed to disappear into the corn. I assumed there was a house out there somewhere. She never said. She was quiet. Must have a bus driver carry me home. Push on the gas, steer that wheel, and wave bye bye the girl who lives in a cornfield. Yeah, yeah. Oh, next thing I remember was a large radio tower out in the middle of nowhere. I look around its tree, tree, rock, rock, bush, rock tower. I assumed it had some purpose because it had a flashing light on top. I always stared at that white flashing light, mesmerized. Like it was going to do something. I didn't want to miss it. So I'd always stretch my neck, strain my eyes to the last possible second. I mean, something could happen, something could happen, something could. But nothing ever did. Bust up, bust up, give me home. Take me over there and away from here. Put that radio tower in your rear view mirror, yeah. came the S curve. You didn't really see it coming. You just fell it when it arrived. Shrap go left, pass me go right. We pause in the middle and reverse all right like some strange synchronized dance that we did every day. I didn't really care for that part for some reason. Like it was a hassle. Just a useless waste of energy. Unless I had a motive. Like if I was sitting next to Karen McFadden. Mmm. Stop, stop, giving me home. Oh, how round and round so gracefully and bring us all together with your gravity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are all singing out. Let's see, it's uh, me, Karen, the gravity, putting the radio tower in the rear view mirrors. We're way by by the girl in the cornfield and finally home, finally home, finally home. You know, all these years later, I found myself taking that same route every once in a while, except now I take that S curve fast and I like it. I still stare at the white flashing light. It's been over 25 years now. Nothing is happening. The flashing light is, it's just being a flashing light. I'm still mesmerized, just not as anxious. I'm a little more at peace now. And when I get up to Cornfield Girls Drive, I find myself slowing down for some reason, and I'm not sure why it's like I'm waiting on 
something. I mean, what's that all about? I mean, I'm sure she's moved on. I guess part of me wants to believe she's still out there somewhere. Maybe out for a walk. Maybe checking her mail. She'll say hi. I mean, I'll say hi. She's quiet. We start talking about old times. We might really hit it off. She'd open up, tell me things about corn I never knew or cared about. Like, did you know the average year of corn has 800 kernels in 16 rows? I'd bring my guitar. We'd get on through the afternoon to a singing songs to the moon. Life would be simple, life would be good. We'd get simple jobs, just part time jobs. We wouldn't need much money. We live in a cornfield. I could be a songwriter. She could be a. Uh, Bus driver, yeah, she could take the kids around the S-curve, show them the flashing light when they drove by the cornfield, the kids would all point and say, I hear there's a weird old man who lives out there and every night he sings to the moon. Life's got a strange way of making circles. I suggest you take the S-curves fast. And whenever bright shiny lights can be real to you, I suggest you revel in those moments. And when you meet your cornfield people, have a cup of tea, you might just find we aren't so different after all. You know, when I stop fixating on getting home and just enjoy the curves, the lights, and the people, I always seem to arrive home just fine. Now, I don't have the answers to the meaning of life, but something about this universe feels like a bus in motion. So I sing praises to the driver because I get to look around. I sing an adoration. It doesn't matter if there's someone out there listening or not. I sing for me because it reminds me, and I don't ever want to take this life for granted. So sometime around midnight, you might hear a song come bouncing off that moon. It might wake you up. Get your attention, kind of like my old class bell. That first listen might sound like that ordinary everyday wind rustling through the trees or the corn stalks. But the last listen, the last listen, the last listen might sound more like a buster buzz. Buster buzzer. When we were doing this program today, I, you know, I had to come down to pick two songs, and it's really, really tough because during the show, there's a lot of different styles, a lot of different things I want to touch upon. These were the choices that I that I made today, but that was a piece. I, uh, um, I was doing a school program, and I was I was uh, uh, driving home, and I uh, instead of taking the fast route home, I just took the route that my bus did. But you know, all these memories start they just come flying in your mind, and I and what I love about music is when you feel like there's a song boiling somewhere inside of you, and you go like, oh right, this is. Good. You know, that's the feeling, I think, when people write music. You want it to come, kind of bubble through you, not so much that you're in control of, of doing it. And um, just that kind of worked out. I didn't, never, never meant for it to be a, a story, but it just kind of started coming out that way. And then, that's, and then there's a certain sense of honoring what it needs to be. So it just kind of um, flew out that way. And I, and I, uh, I think I played a couple of days without writing anything down because I wanted to see where it was going to go. So you just do it, let it tell you where it needs to go. And then, uh, so it's a nice piece. It's a nice uh, staple in the, in the shows. It, and it offers something different, a little bit more on a theatrical acting when you're in front of an audience it gives you an element of acting and then other pieces they're they're instrumental things sometimes it's uh storytelling singing so i like to hit on a almost like there's different parts of your brain that i'm trying to tickle at different times of a show